of the Lord because our God is an awesome God. And this is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen? Amen. Now, if you would stand with me for the reading of the word of God, found none other in Romans. <clears throat> Romans, the eighth chapter of the book of Romans, if you please. Romans 8 and 24. Romans 8 and 24. I just want to read a few verses for your hearing. Romans 8 and 24. For we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why doeth he yet hope for? But if we hope for that we see not, then do we with patience wait for it? Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know that we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself make it intercession for us with groaning which cannot be uttered. And he that searcheth the heart knoweth what is the mind of the spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that all things work together for good, for them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. Verse 31, what shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Living for today, and hope for tomorrow. Living for today. And hope for tomorrow. You may be seated. At this particular time, we want to share with you the importance of not just living, but the importance of living for a purpose. God made man like that. To not just live, but to live for a purpose. But most of all, let that purpose be rooted and grounded in whatever God wants. And whenever we possibly can find ourselves doing just that, I do believe God is well pleased. Because that's just the way God is. God is a just God, a holy God. God, a God without respect of a person. But he loves us all the same. You can't be too high and you can't be too low. You can't be too rich and you can't be too poor. 
You can't have and you can't have not for God to respect you because God loves us all the same. If we all had to stand before God this morning because of justice, we wouldn't make it. That's why he had to send his only begotten son to shed his precious blood for each and every one of us. So never think yourself so high, so low, so rich, so poor, or whatever that's all in between, that God cannot reach your destiny. I, 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 I love the Lord. I used to love to hear my mother sing the song, I love the Lord. He heard my cry. And he pitied my every groan. Now, don't you know, can't nobody make you feel good like that but God. But I want you to know today that the world is full, I suppose I should say, understand a little more how the world is so full of the goodness of God. When we look around and see things going the way they are going, and yet God is still letting us live, we ought to just be still and know that that is nothing but the power of God. But you know, it is a fact that I don't care how good God is. Seem like human nature just cannot comply as it should to the love of God. Oh, just seem like human nature wants to have its way, regardless to what is being said or done. If it's not my way, it's no way. But I want you to understand just a little more, and that's all that God is on his throne. Let all the world keep silent before him. In other words, before you speak the words you think, think a little more about it. Can I get a witness? So this brings me to what Brother Paul charged to Timothy in 2 Timothy 3, we see that time was growing nigh then to the ways of endless gain. I don't care how and who protests for safety. Danger is here, and it's going to be here until Jesus come back. First Timothy, Second Timothy 3 explains it so explicitly. You know, sometimes we as preachers want to get caught up in our verbal speech or eloquence of knowing what to say and how to say it and when to say it to make people feel good. Well, I, I don't mind you feeling good. I want you to feel good. But I want each and every one of us to know who is the author and the finisher of that feeling. Nobody but Jesus. Paul said to Timothy in 2 Timothy 3, this is it. He said, this know also that in the last days, perilous time, that is dangerous times, shall come. The reason or the premise why? For men shall be lovers of their own selves. Covetous, that is greedy. Boaster, that is mouthy. Proud, that is too good for their own good. Blasphemous, thinking that they are God. Uh, disobedient to parents, unthankful, 
unholy. Now, preacher, I don't mind being a preacher. I don't mind being a Christian. I don't mind being a witness. But this holiness, I, 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 I don't go to a holiness church. Well, he didn't say anything about going to the holy church. He's saying something about being holy. Amen? Amen. Without natural affection. Without natural affection. And where did that come from? Truth breakers. Definition, covenant breakers. We have a covenant here at New Life Missionary Baptist Church. If you are a Baptist member of an independent Baptist church, you have a covenant that you should live by. And that covenant was made for each and every one of us who declares to be a Baptist keeper of God's word. So therefore, we must know the difference between right and wrong. Should I or should I not? If I or when I? We should know that to the closest and the best point that we possibly can. False accusers. Incon incontinent. That big word that almost tied my tongue. Incontinent is none other than just plainly oh the lack of self-control. You have so many people are so out of control, they want to declare that can't nobody help but the psychologists or the psychiatrists. I want you to know God made man, and when he made man, he didn't make on the side a psychiatrist, neither a psychologist. He made man to be his own evaluator. He gave man a, what we call a volition is a will to make decisions whether they are right or whether they are wrong. And God gave Adam the mind to know right from wrong from the day that he opened his eyes. And God gave him the breath and he became a living soul. And don't you know that people today will declare and call God in to be guilty of how they was born. But God looks at all of that and beyond all of our misfits, all that we are doing today, he looks beyond all of that and said, I'm going to send you a Savior who can save you, not from the world, but from yourself. You know, and many of us are more dangerous to ourselves than somebody else. It's just because of the way we think. Because after that becomes fierce, that is heated and We get so angry, we get so angry and out of control, despisers of those that are good. You know, we ought to love God for the goodness in this world. David said, I would have fainted if I had not seen the goodness of the Lord. In the land of the living. We ought to stop groaning and moaning over what's going wrong. And just be thankful what God is doing right now. We ought to be thankful that he woke us up this morning. When we opened our eyes, we had a vision. And when we heard a noise, we could check it out. And we had our hands, we could feel for ourselves. And we could feed ourselves and didn't eat anyone to put a spoon in our mouth. Don't you know we have so much that's to be thankful for on the lowest denominator than to be worried about what's going to happen next. Be thankful right now. Live like you're going to die today. Don't live like you're going to live forever because we are not going there until Jesus come back. Can I get a witness? And we see that these people who are traitors, who will tell you one thing, and all of the time they have something else in mind. Be careful about this is my only friend. It's a lovely thing to have a only friend. But let Jesus be your best friend. You can have friends, but let Jesus be your best friend. Because your best friend will show you a traitor yeah, yeah. without a name on his back. Oh, yes, he will. He'll show you 
the ones who are trying to get to you better than you can see by yourself. Put your trust in God and know that God will give you a way to escape from whatever that might impact your life. Because my God is a good God. He said they will become heady, that is, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. Ooh, we people love going fishing on Sunday. Nothing wrong with going fishing, as long as you are going fishing for the right thing. Can I get a witness? Well, go, you might go to church on Monday, but that's still good if you don't go to church. But you ought to give God some praise for making you a week of success, for giving you a day not off work but on work and putting a paycheck in your pocket. You ought to find one day to give to God to say, thank you, Lord, for giving me a week of success. You didn't have to, but you did it anyway. Can I get a witness? High-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. And know what? It is, oh, it is so, so, so true today in this world. Having a form of godliness. Don't you know you ought not to just want to look like a Christian? And you got some people who do. Don't you know you shouldn't just want to sound like a Christian? Don't you know you ought not to go to church with one thing on your mind and leaving the church with another? Don't you know you ought to be single-minded when you come to Jesus? Don't you know that you ought to just have a singletary mind that's going to give him praise? Whether you are sick or whether you are well, whether you are rich or whether you are poor, because you have some poor people who just have a form of godliness. Listen, having a form of godliness is just high-minded. It's just not the way God would want us to be because we, are, we will become lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God having a form of godliness, and then denying the powers thereof. Ooh, he said, from, for these people, we should stay away from. Now, God didn't tell us to hate nobody, but God told us to be careful about the company we keep. Be real careful about who you run with, because, see, who you run with can either bring you down or they can lift you up. But I, I want you to know when you are in the Lord Jesus Christ, he will show you who to run with, who to associate yourself with, who to love to be around. Don't you know when you go out into the world that the world is not going to love you because you love Jesus? Jesus even told his disciples in John the 17th chapter, love not the world. Neither the things that are in the world, because the love of the world is not of me. He said, if they first hated me, they sure going to hate you. And don't you know we ought not to be worried about who hate us? We ought to be loving everybody to show them how Jesus died. The only way we can draw people to Jesus is that we love them in spite of who they are. One writer said, love covers a multitude of sin. Don't you know you ought to love instead of hating? It's easy to hate. But I want you to know, well, we have to let this Bible let you know. In Romans the 8th chapter, what all of this stuff is. Romans the 8th chapter, if you look at it, it said verse 21. We're going to verse 24, and we'll be going home in a minute. Because the creature itself, that's the creature, that's me. The creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. Ooh, you just don't know how much that means to a person who has been baptized 
by the Spirit of God and resurrected by the Spirit of God. Don't you know that when we was dead in sin, could nobody quicken us? Could nobody take the corruption from us? Could nobody give us the glorious liberty? but our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And now that I am a child of God, I know for myself that the whole world is in pain just because Jesus is gone, but he got to come back. Don't you know there are pains in the earth? Somebody heard about earthquakes in California. Somebody heard about hurricanes down south. Don't you know that's a pain that don't nobody want to bear? And even the earth doesn't want to bear it because when Adam sinned, the whole world became sinful. And don't you know if we are going to live for today, we ought to live for Jesus Christ. And we ought to know for a fact that nobody but Jesus can deliver us. And not, verse 23 said, and not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves, grown within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of our bodies. Oh, look at yourself right now. Look at yourself. Just look at you right now. Somebody want to know, how am I going to look when I get to heaven? Am I going to have the same body? and I'm going to have the same look. Do I really need a mirror to look in just to see how I look in heaven? Well, I'm not worried about how I look in heaven because I know Jesus told his disciples, my body is going to connect with my spirit because Jesus told his disciples up in the upper room when he rose from the dead, he said, if you want to know what you're going to look like, he said, give me your hand, Thomas. And he thrust it in his side. Can I get a witness? And he said to somebody else, give me some fish. And he began to eat the fish. Don't you know that tells me my body and my spirit going to be connected back and I'm going to be clothed, not with rags on, but I'm going to be clothed in the glory of God. And that's all I want is to look like Jesus, walk like Jesus, talk like Jesus, praise like Jesus. That's all I want because my hope is in Jesus. My hope is not in the suit I'm wearing. My hope is not in that automobile I drive. My hope is not in that house I live in. My hope is not in that paycheck I get. My hope is in Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we now, we, we now at verse, we are now at verse 24. For we are saved by hope. But hope that is seen is not hope. Why should you hope for what you have on when you already got it on? Why should you hope for food in your pantry when you already have a full? My God, why should you hope for an automobile when you already have one? You don't hope for something you already have. You hope for something that you don't have. And what he's trying to say, the best thing we can hope for is a life in eternity with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. If you really want to hope for something, if you really want to run a marathon, if you really want to be the best of the best, make your best the best in Jesus Christ. Don't let nobody beat you giving him praise like you want to give him praise. And don't you worry about how somebody else praise him. You just praise him from your heart because it's a hard condition affair. Can I get a witness here? But we see here, but if we hope for that we see not, then do we with patience wait for it? He doesn't come when we want him to. But he's always on time. And it's one thing that I'm guilty of having patience when I need to have patience. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. That's what Isaiah said. They shall mount up with wings like an eagle. Now, I don't know whether I have wings in heaven, but he said with wings like an eagle. Yeah. They shall run and not be weary. 
they shall walk and not faint. People are fainting right now. They don't know what's going to happen from one day to the other, from one condition to the next condition. But if you got hope in Jesus, I don't care how you may look like you are grounded in affairs, in association, in relationships, or whatever your problem may be. If you put your love in Jesus Christ, he may not come when you want him to. But you know the hope you have is a lively hope. And you know that when he comes, he's going to make it right. Where it was wrong, he's going to make you love when you couldn't love. He's going to make you understand when you couldn't understand. He's going to give you joy when you was deep down in sorrow. He's going to give you words that you never thought you could speak. Don't you know God it ought to be your only hope? Your only way out. For Jesus said to us to always trust in him. And he says in verse 26, Likewise, the Spirit also helped our infirmities. We know we are weak, for we know not what we shall pray for as we ought. But the Spirit itself make it intercession for us with groaning, which cannot be uttered. And he that searcheth the heart knoweth that, knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he make it intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Amen. Let me tell you something here now. He just doesn't pray for saints. He prayed for sinners too. On, he told Peter, I'm going to pray for you, Peter. Amen. 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 And God knows right now if we need anything in this nation and all the world is prayer. Is that right? Amen. And if we understand that prayer is the key, and faith unlocks the door. We know for a fact that our God is on his throne because he knows our hearts and our hearts desire. That's why Jeremiah said, let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous his deeds and let him call upon the Lord and, and the Lord will abundantly pardon." Can I get a witness? God will make a way out of no way because he knows the heart. And we ought to know for ourselves that all things work together for good for those who love the law. If you love God and you down in a crinch this morning, if you love the law, if the doctor have given you a bad report, if you love the law and your supervisor have given you a pink slip, if you love God and your friends have turned their backs on you, I said, if you love God and your husband or wife have walked out on you, I'm talking about love that lifted me when I was walking the road of sin. If you love God and your mortgage payment is past due, if you only love God and your automobile is playing out on you, but you got to love God even if your children turn their back on you or your mother and father forsake you. But you got to love God because God loved the world. He loved the world so much that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. But you got to love God because he came into the world to save us from our sins. Not to just save us from our sins, but to save us from our reckless ways. Sometimes God has to step in and show us the right way when we want to do the right thing, as well as when we are doing the wrong thing. 
my God is a good God because my God wants us to become more than conquerors and know that he is on our side. Can I get a witness? God wants us to step up and be right for him and know that all things work together for good for those who love the Lord and call according to his purpose. Do you love him like you're supposed to love him? Are you walking with him like you're supposed to walk with him? Are you on the battlefield like you're supposed to be on the battlefield? Well, I stopped by to give you a climax that if you're on the battlefield, don't worry about it because the Apostle Paul tells us in this word in Romans 8 and 28, as well as the verse 37, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that love us. And Brother Paul said, I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor height, nor uh, depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate me from the love of God. I don't care what I have. I don't love it more than I love God. I don't care who I have. I don't love it more than I love God because my God is a good God. Don't you know he's good? Not just sometimes, but all the time. He woke me up this morning, started me on my way. He gave me a new life. He gave me a new walk, and he gave me a new talk. Now I can tell a dying world, nothing but the blood of Jesus Christ saved me from my sin. I can't take the credit because I am guilty of doing the things I did wrong. But I want you to know right now, Charge me all you want to charge me. I'm going to love God till the day I die. Yes, I'm guilty. I've been pleading right now. You don't have to take me to court. I'm going to be guilty of loving God like I'm supposed to. Do or die, I'm going to love my God. Knock me down, I'm going to love my God. Take my children, I'm going to love my God. Take my wife, I'm going to love my God. Take my church, I'm going to love my God. My God is a good God. Don't you know he's good? All the time, he's a mighty, mighty God. And you ought to live for the Lord every day. I know we're going through something, but don't go through it without Jesus being on your side. Don't go through it without waving your hands every once in a while. Don't go through it without going down on your knees every once in a while. Don't go through it getting up early in the morning, arguing and fussing, but just know that God is on your side. Are you living for him just like you ought to? If you're not living, you ought to start. Because my God, my God, my God, my God, my God, he's all right. Isn't he all right? Isn't he all right? You ought to say it. You ought to say it. He's a good job. And I'm glad. Ooh. I am on the battlefield for my Lord. Oh, yes, I'm on for my Lord. Oh, Oh, and I, yes, I did serve him, and now I'm on 
Oh, yes, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Oh, yes, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Oh, and I promise him that I, mm -hmm, I would serve him till I die. And now I'm on. Or I was alone and I done. And I was a sinner too. When I heard the voice of Jesus. And I took my mask. Hand, and then I done back, and now I'm on. Oh, yes, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Hey, yes, I'm on the battlefield. For my Lord, oh, and I, yes, I did serve him, and now I'm on for my Thank you, thank you, thank you. We want to thank the Lord for you. And we want you right where you are, in your home, in your automobile, at the park, on the lakeside, wherever you may be fishing, wherever you may be living. We want you to just know that God loves you. And if you have something special on your heart, you want him to take away, you want him to fix you want him to make brand new. You want him to restore to the life that you want to live for him. We need you to raise your hand right now. If it's you or a loved one, if it's a friend, even if it's an enemy, just raise your hand right now. Don't worry about who looking. Just know that God is able in your bedroom, in your living room, in your kitchen, in your restroom. God is able to reach you. At your lowest and most trivial point of life, he's really, really, really able to lift you up where you belong. And we want you to know that right now. That's why we are offering special prayer for those who will come to the altar this morning. Because our God is an anointing God. And he wants his spirit to be so deep, profounded in your life that there will be no other way that you can live but for him. And those who just want prayer, just bow your heads right now and just understand that God is able. And we want to thank you, Lord, for being so able and so willing and so loving to us. Even while we were yet sinners, you paid the price and quickened our spirits back to life. And we just want to thank you. Thank you for blessing Lord, our families and our friends of this church, Lord, thank you for the ones who are watching, those who are looking right now, Lord, at you, Lord, not just at us, Lord, but at what you have done for us and where you have brought us from and, and what you have given us and, and how you have set us up. As David said upon a rock, Lord, and we thank you right now that our rock is Jesus. And we don't need another rock, Lord. We just want you, Lord, to just cry out for us that we may live the life we need to live. And, Lord, we want to thank you right now for bringing Sister Patterson back to her health, Lord. We want to thank you for touching Sister Cooper's health, Lord. We want to thank you for touching little Lisa right now, Lord. Touch her little life, Lord, and touch her spirit, Lord, and touch those, Lord, who are having relationship problems, Lord, those who are having marriage difficulties, Lord, touch them right now where they are, Lord. We know you can, 
And we know you will, Lord, because the devil is a liar. Lord, he won't he came to destroy, but you came to build and to make alive. And we thank you right now, Father. And Father, we want to thank you for touching our son, Lord. Bless his life. Bless his spirit, Lord. Bless his love for you and his strength, Lord. We thank you just for the glory of Jesus Christ in this place, Lord, for every individual that's right here now raising up their voices for you, raising up their hearts to you, Lord, because you are the only source of life that we can truly depend upon, Lord. And we pray right now for the returning of schools, Lord, those who are open and, and those who are closing, Lord. We pray, Lord, for their safety. Lord, we pray for your mighty hand of, of deliverance. Lord, we know that you are able to touch whoever that needs touching to heal whoever that need healing. And Lord, we thank you for every doctor, every nurse, every caretaker, every place of caring for and sharing for those who are in need. Lord, we need you right now in the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, we ask all these blessings. Amen and thank you, Lord. Give God some praise. Give God some praise.